Peace, family. I know y'all probably like, what is that? Listen, this is at a home. Not sure exactly where it is, but I had a video up before of a, a creature coming to someone's home in Texas. Now, where this home is, not really sure, but as you could tell, whatever this thing is, is huge. And not only huge, but you could really see it. Now, when I run the video, I'm going to run the video. I'm going to need you guys to look at the top and the bottom. Now, if this thing had on a costume or anything of that nature, boy, this man or woman that's up in this costume is skinny as hell, right? The body does not match a human body. Now, I'm going to run the video, but just take a, take a look at the face, the eyes, the legs, the arms, the body of this thing that's at the door of these people's home. Now, this is a real life home of somebody that lives there, right? Now, they go into the doors of these people. Now, mind you, I'm so happy. I, maybe I need to give me a ring, a ring door camera, too, because... These cameras is capturing every single thing. Now, I'm finna run the video. Y'all let me know in the comments what y'all think about this. I'm telling you, I always come with them hitters. Like, follow, for share. Follow me for more because I'm a steady, steady bringer. Run the video. Pay attention, y'all. Look at the eyes. See how black the eyes is? You can't tell me that that's a human, bro. Look at that. Look at the body. Look at the legs, how they don't match. A human can't be that skinny, y'all. A human body cannot be that skinny. Y'all let me know in the comments what y'all think about that. This is somebody's home. This is somebody's home, y'all, that this thing has come up to. That's a camera. Look, they looking and trying to look in the door type. Y'all let me know in the comments what y'all think about this. Follow me for more. I bring them to you every day. Follow me for more. Comments. Peace. Few things, few things, few things. Uh, it's not a ring doorbell camera because it's too high. If you look at it, it's above the window right there on the left. Second of all, me personally, I would think that if aliens were coming here to to Earth on a mission, they wouldn't be stopping by people's houses and looking in their camps. That's, that's just me. It just don't make sense. Like, if aliens were really coming here to Earth, they would be trying to finish the mission. But they not. But I just don't make no sense. In honor of Jocelyn Nungari. Lakin Riley, beautiful Lakin, Rachel Morin, and all of the others that are dead and or mortally wounded at the hands of migrants who should never have been allowed into our country. I'm announcing today that upon taking office, we will have an Operation Aurora at the federal level. We will send elite squads of ICE, Border Patrol, and federal law enforcement officers to hunt down, arrest, and deport every last illegal alien gang member until there is not a single one left in this country. And if they come back into our country, they will be told it is an automatic 10-year sentence in jail with no possibility of parole. And I'm hereby calling for the death penalty for any migrant that kills an American citizen or a law enforcement officer. A business owner uh, in Lansdale, I have a small breakfast, lunch restaurant, coffee corner. And, um, and, and to be honest, Mr. President, I, I really, you know, am praying for you to get in there and change the policies. Um, Ever since the gas prices started spiking, I noticed literally everything started spiking from deliveries to services, goods, even 
even maintenance, overall maintenance, everything just spiked up and it's really hurting small businesses, small business owners and those who work within them. So uh, my question is, what, what's your plan to help bring common sense back and help small businesses that got destroyed by Democrats after COVID and the Biden administration? So, great. Because small businesses are actually bigger than big businesses when you add them all up. And it's very important. And sounds like yours. I would love your food. I can tell by looking at that guy. I think I'd like to go over there if I am. If I'm over there, I'm going to stop it. The, uh, the fact is that, you know, they want to get away from gas. And I have friends. They're into the cooking world. I'm not. I just like to eat. But they're into the cooking. And I don't know how you feel. It sounds like you... They feel that you really gas is much better than the electric for cooking, right? And they have this thing about, you know, they want to put gas out of business, right? No gas. You know the amazing thing? We don't have electric in this country, but we have all the gas you can use. We have all the, we have oil and gas. That's what we have. And even the cars, if you look, they want to go with all electric cars. California is having blackouts every week, brownouts, blackouts. And then they come up with rules and regulation to go to all electric, but they can't even supply what they have. It's so nuts. Uh, we're going to get number one, your utility cost. You heard me say it before. Your costs will be down and we're getting rid of all the. Well, that's one thing about Trump is that he care about small businesses. A lot of people don't realize that small businesses, and I don't know if people have noticed that, but small businesses really, really are a whole bunch of restaurants. And that has become the heart of America because a lot of people don't go to big restaurants like they used to anymore. They go to the small businesses that offer new new types of eatery, you know, and you can see it on TikTok, uh, YouTube. People got uh, doing food reviews to all of these small businesses. And right now that the, the small restaurants are the heart of America and, and Trump know that. I would love it if you could just name uh, two black Republican senators. Um, well, there is one that I know of, Tim Scott. Yeah. Can you name a second one? Uh, I, I'm not sure there is a second. Maybe you could correct yeah. me if I'm wrong. No, there's not. No, there's not. Yeah, so it's a trick question. Yeah. How about this? Can you name yeah. me the only black Supreme yeah. Court justice? Actually, there's no, two of them. Well, it's not a trick question. It's a trick. It's a question to try to prove a point. So other than what, Byron what, what, Donald, what, what's the Byron point? Donald, can you name another yes, Republican uh, congressperson? Yeah, Wesley Hunt. Okay. Do you know what the percentage of black Republican representation in the Republican side of Congress is? Do you know what that number is? Uh, it, it's not very high. But it's not very I know it's about a fraction of a fraction no, of no, a no, single hold on, percent. But okay, yeah. that's interesting. No, no, but I'm curious. But I'm curious because I've heard you in other videos. You say, what's the total black population of the United it, States? It's thir roughly thir 13 percent. Yeah. 14 percent of the constituents are represented by 0.001 percent on your side. Now, I'm curious about this one. What's the percentage of the United States citizens who are Christian, who identify as Christian? Um, or Judeo -Christian? Probably 50 to 55 percent. What's the percentage of Christians who are Republican in Congress? Just curious. Uh, it's it's 100 percent. Well, hold on a second. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Yeah, it's 100%. Hold on. So, Cal calm yeah. down. You, you've talked this entire no, but time. representation matters to you. Oh, no, hold on. One, one second. Let me. Matters how have the you. Democrats done yeah. overseeing the black community the last 40 years? Are they wealthier, richer, richer, happier? Everybody's made mistakes, bro. People no, no. Are uh, no, no. Answer the question. I'm answering the I just answered the question. There has been successes and there's been what failures. What success but on has your the black side? Well, let me, like, can I ask you this? Let me ask this question the other what, way. What success so, exactly? So, uh, this is the best way to do this. So I'm an alumni. I hope that's okay. Uh, we're gonna say alumni. Yeah. I guess his argument is that there's not much representation on the Republican side for Black people as it is on the Democratic side. Well, that's true. But the only reason why that's true is because Black people have been tricked into voting Democrat for so long that every Black politician has went Democrat. But that's not to say when when they talk when they talk these numbers two percent three percent. That don't mean that it's two black people. His argument is irrelevant. Of course, there are more black people on the Democratic side because they grew up Democrat. It's a Hail Mary pass considering that we did vote him in based off of identity politics. And I'm not saying that all is bad because he did do some things that I didn't necessarily disagree with that Trump absolutely did better than him. But at the same time, I felt that it was incredibly disrespectful because he's making the assumption that we're not educated enough to lead our families, to look at the policies, to understand exactly what's going on with immigration, and we're supposed to overlook everything that they did over the last three and a half years that was not in our favor. And when I say our, I'm talking about the American people, let alone men, let alone black men, and we're supposed to vote for her because of some misogynistic reason that's made up 
and instead we've learned how to educate ourselves and now they've sent their messiah back to reign us in and bring us back into the democratic plantation and most men that I've spoken with have said that it's absolutely disrespectful and we're done with Obama. They took the same blueprint that got Obama elected and he was a first for us, right? So our grandparents and our parents and things like that wanted to see this happen, but they were largely voting out of ignorance and voluntary ignorance because they only wanted that identity politics in order to push him through into the presidency. But admittedly, where he was charismatic, she isn't. And so we can see through her, she's a chameleon. When they unleashed her and they allowed for her to be able to take reporters questions and things like that, it showed that she was completely incompetent. And frankly, not only do we feel disrespected, but I'm uncomfortable with Obama standing in front of us trying to scold us and then divert our attention away from the things that's really meaningful, especially for our families. I'm not comfortable with him. I don't wanna hear any more messages of hope. I don't want to hear any more messages of joy. I can fill it with my pocketbooks. My friends can fill it with their pocketbooks. And we're ready for him to get out of our way. Well, he said everything that was needed to be said. Ain't nothing for me to say. We have not yet seen the same kinds of energy and turnout in all quarters of our neighborhoods and communities as we saw when I was running. Now, I also want to say that that seems to be more pronounced with the brothers. When you have a choice that is this clear, <clears throat> when on the one hand you have somebody who grew up like you, knows you, went to college with you, understands the struggles and pain and joy that comes from those experiences. Who's had to work harder and do more and overcome. And you're coming up with all kinds of reasons and excuses. Part of it makes me think that, well, you just aren't feeling the idea of having a woman as president. And so now you're thinking about sitting out or even supporting somebody who has a history of denigrating you because you think that's a, a sign of strength because that's what being a man is, putting women down. That's not acceptable. I mean, you could look in Obama's eyes and tell he wasn't even sure about what he was saying. I bet that whole little session was long and excruciating for those black men that were actually sitting in there. Because me, if I was there, I would have got up and walked out. I don't believe in hectoring voters. I believe in persuading voters. Or So one, I just don't like the tone of going in. I mean, look. Has, the, the better question for Barack Obama or anybody to ask is not why black men, it's not, it's not how dare you not vote for Kamala Harris, it's maybe they're thinking about voting for Donald Trump because they're sick of being censored. Look, a broken clock may be right twice a day, but that doesn't mean that I have to like it. At the end of the day, what J.D. Vance is... What the hell did he just say? A broken clock may be right twice a day, but that doesn't mean that I have to like it. A broken clock may be right twice a day, but that doesn't mean I have to like it. I don't know where he was going with that analogy, but it don't fit. A broken clock might be right twice a day, but I, that don't mean I have to like it. Why would you like a clock? Why would you like time? I, maybe he meant a broken clock may be right twice a day, but that don't mean it's, it's correct. Today, what J.D. Vance is saying in and of itself, the principles may align, but at but there are so many things about J.D. Vance why he has no credibility and you can't take him seriously, even as he parrots things that may be true in with respect to how some black men and somehow how some black voters are feeling. So it's a mixed bag. This is a conversation that, quite frankly, at the end of the day, he should probably stay out of and let community business speak for community. Yeah, I mean, he has every right to say what he want to say, but he doesn't represent me. He definitely doesn't represent me. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think Joe Biden's a good person. 
I know. It's crazy. But hear me out. See, we haven't had the October surprise this year. And I think that October surprise is going to come in the last week of October. My prediction is that in the last week of October, Joe Biden is going to endorse Donald Trump for president. I know you think that I'm crazy, but let's look at the facts. When asked if Governor DeSantis should answer Kamala Harris when she calls him, he simply defended the Republican governor of Florida, DeSantis. He said he's talked to DeSantis, and DeSantis is doing a phenomenal job. When they asked him about the rhetoric from Donald Trump, he didn't answer. He pivoted to international affairs. Sometimes you have to read between the lines to understand somebody's true motives. And I think Joe Biden has seen what the Democrats are willing to do to retain power for the swamp. And I personally think that on October 29th or 30th, Joe Biden is going to endorse Trump to not give Kamala any time for damage control. And also so he can't just disappear and she's made president of the United States early. That is what I believe the October surprise is going to be this year. Although I don't think that's going to happen, I got to say, he did wear a Trump hat once. Once. Maybe it was as a joke, but he did wear it. That got to mean something, right? Trump just tweeted a savage campaign ad four minutes ago. Kamala support taxpayer-funded sex changes for prisoners. Surgery. Um, for prisoners. Uh, for prisoners. Every transgender inmate in the prison system would have access. Hell no, I don't want my taxpayer dollars going right. to that. Kamala supports transgender sex changes in jail with our money. Kamala even supports letting biological men compete against our girls in their sports. Kamala is for they them. President Trump is for you. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. Yeah, that was crazy and cryptic at the same time. But yeah, I don't agree with that either. And this is this is added to more of the problems of why she should not be president. Because what what sense did that make? You give people who committed crimes that are currently serving time access to gender change surgery? Are you serious? One of the issues that we saw happen was we had somebody decide as Hurricane Milton approached that it would somehow be a good thing to take his dog and chain it to a post on the interstate. Well, um, we had a um, uh, Florida Highway Patrol uh, with us here today um, that, that saw that, that dog in distress. Now that sucks. Why would somebody do something like that? Luckily, that dog survived. The dog was very rattled from that experience. Uh, rescued the dog. The dog's now in Tallahassee. It will be adopted, uh, renamed Trooper. But we said at the time, you don't just tie up a dog and, and have them out there for a storm. Totally unacceptable. And uh, we're going to hold you accountable. Well, I'm proud to announce that um, uh, the authorities have identified the dog's former owners. And State Attorney Susie Lopez is now pursuing animal cruelty charges against the individual. So... Yeah, but I think they're going, they're moving a little fast on that one. Maybe that person didn't leave their dog there. Maybe they had no choice. And when the hurricane came through, they couldn't go back and save the dog. Sometimes we got to think a little more logical because everything does not deserve criminal charges, man. Like that right there. If they did it on purpose, yeah. We probably, none of us will have a job. Um, there will be, but in that benign scenario, there will be universal high income. Uh, not universal basic income, universal high income. There would be no shortage of goods or services. Um, and I, I think the benign scenario is the most likely scenario, probably, I don't know, 80% likely if you ask, in, in my opinion. Um, the, the, the question will not be um, one of uh, lacking goods or services. You'll have, um, everyone will have, will have access to as much in the way of goods and services as they would like. Um, the, the, the question will really be one of meaning of how, how if, if you if the computer can do and the robots can do everything better than you uh then uh what the, 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 does your life have meaning yeah i mean that's a real question and that's why i always say and, and let me address that i want to say that you know he him saying that you know nobody will have a job doesn't mean that you will be, will be without income 
be saying that uh, when the robots come in and do all the jobs that we were normally supposed to do, that will make room for universal high income, which means that will make everybody a business owner or because last time I checked those robots that he are that he's producing are super affordable. So, yeah, he's trying to make it to where nobody has to work anymore and a lot of people can have free time. I believe deep down inside that Elon wants a better economy. He's not creating these robots for what uh, social media is saying that he's creating these robots for. He could be. I could be wrong. But I like to look on the bright side of things. I'm an optimistic. Everyone was a slave. Everyone. Well, not everyone was a slave. No, everyone was a slave. Okay. We are all descended from slaves. It's just a question of when. Was it more recent or less recent? That's it. That doesn't mean a lot to a whole lot of people who aren't able to take advantage of the opportunities that you were able to take advantage of simply because the color of your skin. What advantage does the color of my skin give me? There's an ease that you have in society that many people of color don't. And there's a legacy of racism that still continues on in this country. If we keep talking about it nonstop, it will never go away. If we keep making it the central thing, it will never go away. Why do you believe that? I think we want to get away from making everything a race or a gender or whatever issue. And just treat people like individuals. I want to say both parties are right. There is a systemic racism that goes on in this country that allows, you know, a certain group of people to get ahead faster than another group of people. But I agree with Elon, too, because he says that if you constantly talk about it, it'll never go away. I mean, that's true, but it's easier said than done, because if I don't talk about or I don't think that racism exists and somebody comes up to me and calls me the N word or does something that is evidently racist towards me, then how can I just not address it? You know, if you've never dealt with racism, this easy to say, you know, and like I said, I don't like making my channel about racism. because Y'all know I love everybody. So but we can't deny that it's a problem and we all have to come together, even black, white, green, yellow, purple, whatever. We all have to come together to fix it. We have to fix it. White people on your side have to say, you know what? It is a systemic problem with racism. And I don't want them white people to make me as a white person look bad. And then you have to have black people to say, you know what? There are angry black people on this side. And I have to prove to them that, okay, you got some good white people out here. So I don't want these black people to make me look bad. So let me go talk to these black people. We have to handle these things ourselves. We have to do our due diligence. So I agree with both parties. You know me, I am super unbiased. And I try to do things that'll keep people together, not separate. So a lady in Miami, Florida sent this video to us by email, which shows some type of flying creature. This video is so old, it's trash. But we're gonna watch it anyway. We don't know what this creature is. It's too skinny to have a human being inside of it. It looks like a full robotic body. Some people are saying it looks like an extraterrestrial gray. Um, its head is kind of weird. It looks like it has some type of football helmet on or um, bicycle helmet. But uh, this is a real good video because it shows the, you know, being disappearing and reappearing into the video. I don't know if you guys saw that. But what do you guys think? Has anybody in Miami ever seen anything like this before? Please comment below. I want to know. Also, guys, support the page. Don't forget to share. Some people tell the country is on the wrong track. They say the country is on the wrong track. If it's on the wrong track, that track follows three and a half years of you being vice president and President Biden being president. That is what they're saying, 79% of them. Why are they saying that? If you're turning the page, you've been in office for three and a half years. And Donald Trump has been running for office. But you've been Donald Trump has been running for office. She literally had nothing to say. She couldn't conjure up nothing. That's crazy. It's an hell of a meal. Come on. Madam you Vice and I President. both know what I'm talking about. You and I both know what I'm talking about. I actually about. don't. What are you talking about? What I'm talking about is that over the last decade, but people you're the have become. Of power. But listen, over the last decade, it is clear to me, and certainly the Republicans who are on stage with me. Yeah, that's the interview that she stormed out of because she couldn't get 
what she wanted to say or he wouldn't let her lie. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Here he is as he makes the big jump. Tragically, the parachute never opened. Tyler plummeted 13,000 feet to his death, attached to his tandem instructor, who was not certified and was also killed. Tyler Turner was thrilled to go skydiving. Fighting back nerves, the 18-year-old taped this video minutes before heading into the air. My name is Tyler Turner. What do I do here? I am going to jump out of a plane. <laughs> it's your first time. First time indeed. His mom, Francine, was there to see him off. That's my mama over there. Hello, very loving mom. That's crazy. To see your son off and he doesn't make it back. That's crazy, man. That's why I'll never skydive. I'm sorry, because it might just be my day that I go that the parachute don't work. Just like it was his. Uh, in my life. Hope more that she'll help me with more of my life. Because I want to make it. <laughs> okay, we're going to make it. I saw the ambulances and um, sheriffs and police, uh, fire engine, all that stuff was in the distance. And I could see all the lights going. I thought, oh my gosh, my son is hurt. You know, we got to get him to the hospital. Since the 1980s, the skydiving company in Lodi, California, reportedly has been linked to 20 other deaths. Damn. Damn. 20 other deaths? Why would you still go? Man, rest in peace to that young man, man. But damn. No chance that Kamala Harris is going on Joe Rogan after her disastrous interview on Fox News with Brett Baer. So bad that Kamala's campaign and all her little interns and everybody she's got around her told her to cut it off. They cut it off like 30 minutes early. It was only 30 minutes long. I'm talking like four people waving their hands. Like it's you got to stop. And I gotta give Brett Baer some kudos, man. He he went after her about a lot of stuff. He, he went after her about transgenders getting sex change surgery in prison and whether or not she would have taxpayer funds fund that. She refused to answer. She only diverted back to Trump. She's like, I would, but Trump would, just like Trump would follow the law. I would follow. She wants to be Trump so fucking bad. Then he played a clip of a mother whose daughter was murdered by an illegal immigrant and blames the Harris Biden administration for that happening. Biden Harris administration open border policies are responsible for the death of my daughter. Do you owe them an apology? Is what I you will tell you that I am so sorry for her loss. I am so sorry for her loss, sincerely. But let's talk about Trump. What is happening right now? Do you want to talk about Trump? An individual who does not want to participate in solutions. I kept trying to divert back to Trump to a point where Brett was like, listen, the American people want to know more about you. And then she was like, well, Trump's on the ballot. We need it. He's like, but the interview is about you. Then she got really mad and she started screaming about Trump and how he's going to turn the American government against the American citizen. And Brett fact-checked her and he's like, listen, this is what Trump has said. And he played in the clip of what he said. She's like, that's you knew and I both know that he has said that he's gonna turn the American military against American citizens on numerous occasions. And he's like, we just played you the clip as to where that came from and it's obviously not true. And she's like, you know that's what he's gonna do because Trump is a dictator, he's terrible and he's unstable. She said Trump is unstable like 16 times. Like they're, that's, that's the narrative that they're trying to push through. And nobody is buying this. Nobody is buying it. Nobody. Except Harry Sisson. And that boy had that tweet written up before the interview even aired. And he's like, Kamala is such a great person. And just stood on, oh my God. There's no way she'd last on Joe Rogan. There's not a fucking chance. Oofda. Unfortunately, her supporters are still in the comments of that video saying that, oh, she did great. Oh, she did this and the third. But it's warranted because guess what they did trump like that during the de debate they wouldn't let him get words out they wouldn't let him thoroughly explain himself and she just got back what what they did to trump that's it jocelyn nungary rachel morin lakin riley they are young women who were brutally assaulted and killed by some of the men who were released at the beginning of the administration well before a negotiated uh, bipartisan bill Former President Clinton actually referred to Lake and Riley Sunday campaigning for you in Georgia, saying if those men had been properly vetted, Lake and Riley probably would not have been killed. So if it wouldn't have happened, this is well before any negotiation. This is well before Donald Trump got involved in the politics. This is a specific policy decision by your administration to release these men into the country. So what I'm saying to you, no, do you no, owe those I families think I think an apology? Let me just say, first of all, those are tragic cases. There's no question about that. There is no question about that. And I can't imagine 
the pain that the families of those victims have experienced for a loss that should not have occurred. So that is true. It is also true that if a board of security had actually been passed nine months ago, it would be nine months that we would have had more border agents at the border, more support for the folks who are working around the clock trying to hold it all together. Madam Vice President. To ensure that no future harm would occur. And this election in 20 days will determine whether we have a president of the United States who actually cares more about fixing a problem, even if it is not to their political advantage in an election, because there was a solution, Brett. Madam Vice President, it was a policy decision in the early part of your administration. I will let one of the mothers talk about it. Take a listen. Because of the Biden-Harris administration open border policies catch and release, they were enrolled in the Alternatives to Detention program. This meant that they were released into the United States. It was not even a full three weeks later that they would take my daughter Jocelyn Nungare's life. I believe the Biden-Harris administration open border policies are responsible for the death of my daughter. That's the early days. So do you owe them an apology is what I'm saying. Tell you that I am so sorry for her loss. I am so sorry for her loss. Y'all peep the, I am so sorry for her loss. I am so sorry for... Why would you shake your head no, but say you're sorry for something? I am so sorry for her loss. Yeah, nah, I don't believe it. I am so sorry for her loss. Sincerely. Yeah, miss me with it. Because I, I saw it. Y'all see it? Because I saw it. Right, my ch ch uh, child tax credit right. has decreased by almost right. 80%. <sighs> Last year, I broke my neck. Um, I almost lost. You have a beautiful voice, by the way. Thank you so much. Yep. I'm having a panic attack yeah. right now. I'm like, <laughs> don't panic. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. There's no way around it. There's no shortcut. Mm. Wow. The word imminent, you know. And you write, uh, actually, in the foreword of the book, you say this is not me meant that there's, you know, some sort of imminent threat necessarily. But I, I'm not going to lie. When I spend time with you, we've spent a decent amount of time together. I get the sense that you're sitting on things that feel like very hard truths. It feels like your uh, existence, like you want to say more mm -hmm. and you feel like you are uh, you're you're holding it together. And uh, that's a tough spot to be in. And so to the extent you can talk about what might be imminent, what is imminent? Time is not a luxury that we can afford. We, 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 the time has come, we need to start having the conversation collectively. We should, should have had it a while ago. We, we really need to, we really need to start having the conversation. I can't think of a better note to yeah and on. Uh, awesome guys, it's been an honor and a privilege. It's been an absolute for us. Hmm. I wonder what imminent danger he's talking about. I'm sorry, y'all. I had to re-record the video because I had a name wrong. Did y'all? And let me ask y'all again. Did y'all see the two horns forming at the top of her head, or was it just me? I don't remember seeing no horns. Did y'all see some horns? One thing demons can't do is hide. That woman has something in her. Did y'all notice when Brett asked her, could she apologize to the victim's family that lost their life due to illegal criminals in the country? She never once apologized. And when she did say she was sorry for her loss, she shook her head no the entire time. Her now we did see that. Birds was not matching up with her body language. That told me all I needed to know. That woman has something inside of her. She has something inside of her. And I need to stay away from anything she got to offer. And that's just what it is. Please go back and rewatch the video. I did not hear anybody mention this part. I know what I seen. Um... And yeah, for entertainment purposes only. Yeah, y'all go back and rewatch that video and let me know what y'all see. Now, I must warn y'all, this video is the video of the lady being gunned down by the police officer by the name of Sydney Wilson, right? 
it's a little graphic so i just gotta let y'all know before we play the video how are you oh Oh, yeah. Back off, back off. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, man. I got something to do with you. Please back off. Oh, yeah. Back off. Back off. Back off. Oh, wow. Oh. Fight to the one, Bobo. That's crazy. Nice. Single one. Shots fire. What is your location? Oh sh! Did y'all hear that? Sound like some some type of demon or something, man. Let me go back. I know I'm not tripping. I know I ain't tripping. Did y'all hear that? No, I got to do this one more time, y'all. It's safe to say that that lady was possessed with something and that and that officer did what he had to do what is your location three two two apartment three two two one one eight thirty somebody sunrise valley and the police officer is bleeding he in danger of dying come on now star medic please the suspects, suspects down. I need medical too. Units are out, sent up and start from in and out. And listen to the song she's playing in the background. Five, seven, five, five. Some damn big mama. Are you all inside the apartment still? No, I'm in the hallway. Yeah, that's rough. That lady was possessed with something. And I really believe that these today's music possess people. I really do. I really do. That's another story for another time, man. But well, I'ma say this and I'ma leave it here. What are y'all thoughts on that last video? I just had to throw it in there because you know. We always have these police killings of people who are unarmed, right? That literally don't do nothing. But we know for a fact that this one was justified. And although we can say that that one right there wasn't racially motivated, but can we say that about the others? And when you, when you profile a person and say, oh, my child didn't do nothing. He didn't do nothing, right? I see a lot of particularly white people say that in the comments of certain videos. Right. But what if that child didn't do nothing? What if that child really was innocent? And we look at videos like this where it was justified and I'm agreeing with it, you know, but I'm not going to agree with every video that happens like that because some of them are unjustified. My thing is, is that us as a people, we need to get down to the bottom of it and try to fix this some way, somehow, man. And if I got any police officers that follow me and I know y'all have to really be careful on things that y'all say. That if y'all watching this video give your opinion on certain things do you think that there are some corrupt officers on the force and if you do then i know that there are some people that are on the force that are that really want to see this change happen right whether it be black or white because let's not get it twisted you got some black cops out there that do the same thing they unjustly unalive people it is what it is right I try to stay out of the way of all of that. I try to avoid the officers because I don't want to be a victim of that, you know? And it's crazy that as a black man, I have to drive around in fear that if I get pulled over, that I might not make it back home because they may take something that I say the wrong way and they might try to wrestle me out of the car and they might say I'm resisting when I'm really not. I don't want to go through that. So I try to avoid that, right? But this is the black man's fear every day, especially mine. And it's my fear for my boys, my young men that's coming up. They're about to start driving on their own. And I have to teach them the correct way to deal with the officers. And, you know, and you're supposed to have freedom of speech, but that no longer exists because if you try to exert that, then, you know, it could go wrong for you. You know, it's just a lot that comes with it. But for people that are saying that that right there 
with the lady was unjustified. Oh, you wrong. It was definitely justified. She came slashing a knife at this man. And he had no other choice but to off her. And he did what he had to do. Because she, if she, if he hadn't done it, it would have been him. Period. I'm not going to rant. I could, but I won't. And with that being said, do what you will with that information. And hey, if you like what you saw, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Turn on that notification bell so you know when I upload. And remember, challenge the argument and not the person. And if you want to see more dope videos, click that video over there.